Hut, hut, hey. Hello again, my friends. Your boy Roy here from ChicagoFootballTalk.com. And on today's episode of Chicago Football Talk, I want to share with you my thoughts on the release of Khalil Bell. A lot of you have asked me about it. Um, if you've been watching my show or the videos on YouTube, you shouldn't be surprised. I did point out that Allen and Booker were nipping on his heels, that Bell had been making mistakes in special teams, and some of the opportunities he dropped during the, the games as well, the preseason games, uh, we're starting to put the heat on him. He started to put the heat on him himself. Now, there's been a lot of speculation, people pointing out that it's the money that made Bell expendable, but I think there's other factors that's oversimplifying it. Honestly, Booker and Allen's performance are what made, and Bell's performance as well, that's what made him expend, expendable. And some of the factors that you can look at, look at the timing of it. This is not to be overlooked. Timing is everything. They waited till Bell already got to New York, right? But it's on the eve of the third preseason game. This happened yesterday, Thursday, and today is Friday. Tonight's when they play. If Bell decided that he wasn't going to take the pay cut, the Bears wanted to make sure that they used took advantage of all the remaining opportunities that they had these final two preseason games to take a look at who they wanted to keep Booker or Allen on the final 53. So make no mistake about it. Okay. It's not like they, uh, I know Von McClure from the Chicago Tribune reported that they asked him to take that pay cut and then he asked for his release. Well, they were going to let him go anyway, in my humble opinion, if you look at the timing of it, right? They want to take advantage of those opportunities. Now, Bell would have been a better option for them to keep as a third running back uh should he would he have accepted the pay cut because he's the most like forte and bush they would meaning that they wouldn't have had to ditch so many things out of their playbook uh like they may have had to do for an allen and a booker bell is more like those other two guys so he would have been the better option to keep if his performance would have allowed them to keep him but just him taking the pay cut was no guarantee that he has a roster spot he still could have played himself off the roster and still could have made himself even more expendable like he had already done to get him to that point to where they asked him to take a pay cut if his performance would have uh, looked bad if he would have made some bad plays tonight if he would have made bad plays next Thursday when they take their final preseason uh, battle versus the Browns if I'm not mistaken so uh, and also Allen and uh, Booker could have actually done taken advantage of whatever opportunities they were going to have this game and next week as well to also make them even consider even more that they can live without Khalil Bell so Booker and Allen's performance, more than anything, is what made Khalil Bell expendable. If Booker and Allen wouldn't have looked good, then Bell would still be on this team. And they would have asked him, to, they, maybe they still would have asked him to take a pay cut, but they wouldn't have given him his release or, or uh, let him go uh, if those other two guys had not performed well. So they were prepared to let him go, despite how it was reported that he asked his re release. And the Bears were like, sure, you can have your release, even though we want to keep you. No way, no how. There's a reason they signed on the contracts, and it's because they want those, them rights, if you will, okay? Now, why did Bell decide to actually uh, ask for his release the way it was reported? If he did ask for his release, uh, why didn't he accept the pay cut more appropriately? Because that we know he didn't accept the pay cut. Because as Brad Biggs pointed out on Twitter, he would have gotten paid $85,000 more than he's likely to actually get should he sign with another team. The vet minimum is 615,000. Vaughn McClure reported that they asked him to take a pay cut down to 700,000. That's $85,000 difference. 85 grand is 85 grand. So why would he risk losing 85 grand just cause pride, just cause his feelings were hurt? No, um, I don't think that's the case. I think he weighed the fact that he's not gonna get any touches on this team. The third running back is not gonna get touches on this team, not when you have Forte and Bush. Those guys are getting all that. There's no Khalil Bell package and there's not going to be a, an Armando Allen or Booker package, even though they bring them a different type of running back than the other two do. Those other two guys still do what those guys are doing, but they do it a little bit better. Now, uh, Booker and Allen might be a little quicker in their cuts, but still, you don't take what you don't sacrifice and take everything else that Forte and Bush give you uh, just to take advantage of a little quickness and speed. So, the thing is, Bell saw an opportunity. He knew he wasn't going to get hardly any touches on this team. And he thought, you know what? It's worth it. If I can go stick with another team, then maybe I can actually play my way with take advantage of those opportunities and cash in and bank up for that lost 85000 in 2013. So uh, make no mistake about it. Money was a factor, but it wasn't the main factor that made him expendable. Booker and Allen's play are what made Khalil Bell expendable. Now, the, to wrap this up, a lot of people have now asked me, 
Who do they keep versus Booker Allen? Who has the lead? In my opinion, it's a tie right now. Booker might have more special teams value than Allen, just like he has probably more special teams uh, value than Bell. Like I said, Bell had that penalty, that push in the back, back uh, that block in the back on Weems' gr- big return. And it's not like they, they value returners. They could fill the hole that Khalil Bell is going to leave. He wasn't such a stud on special teams in the role that he was playing already. So uh, Booker probably has more value on special teams than Allen does, but Allen has youth on his side. Now, as to whether they'll keep them both on the active roster, the final 53, I highly doubt it. The only way that they'll keep them both, and this is what's likely going to happen unless either of those two guys make terrible mistakes in the final two preseason games. What's likely to happen is that they're going to keep Booker on the final 53 because of his return value, and they're probably going to try to stash Allen on the practice squad because Booker's not eligible for it, and Allen is, and that's one way that the Bears can keep both of those guys. But that's probably probably what they wanted to do and that's probably why they basically gave bell an ultimatum but just if he would have accepted that roster cut it would not have guaranteed him a spot he still could have got waived because they were already thinking in that direction obviously you don't cut a guy you know you're gonna need so anyway those are my thoughts on the khalil bell release uh stay tuned for follow me on twitter at your boy roy because i will be breaking down the game as it happens and providing that insight that uh you can only find from me during the game anyway so i hope you enjoyed my tweets last week and look forward to following me on your boy roy tonight uh bears versus the giants baby i can't wait your boy roy for chicago football talk.com on chicago football talk peace and i'm out